Sam Bankman Fried, a 30 year old who founded FTX, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, was the golden face in the crypto world as recently as the summer of 2022. Sam Bankman Fried, often called SBF, managed to amass a net worth of $26.5 billion. But his wealth did not last for long as his company went bankrupt by the end of 2022. And he was charged with several crimes including wire fraud and money laundering. How did things go so wrong in the blink of an eye? Let's disclose the reason for the FTX disaster and see how one of the crypto giants went bankrupt in less than 10 days. In late 2017, SBF co-founded Alameda Research, a cryptocurrency hedge fund named after his hometown. In 2019, based on the success of Alameda, SBF founded his own cryptocurrency exchange and named it FTX. Since cryptocurrency investing has gained more popularity and acceptance in recent years, many people have used crypto exchanges to buy various cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Solana, Maric, Ether, etc. So, as cryptocurrency increased in popularity, so did SBF and FTX. The exchange quickly expanded thanks to the high-profile acquisitions, a sizable marketing budget, and assurances of excellent returns. Users were informed that FTX offered significantly higher yields than other conventional banks. But we were not informed that even though FTX quickly gained popularity, it would go down even quicker. The user base of FTX was increasing day by day and more and more people were investing in FTT, which is FTX's main token. But people did not know that they were failing for deception. Rise of FTX and Sam Bankman Fried Famous people like Stephen Curry, Shaquille O'Neal, Tom Brady and Larry David served as ambassadors for FTX. Kevin O'Leary recently revealed that he received $15 million in compensation for serving as the FTX's spokesperson. FTX raised an enormous $400 million in a funding round in January 2022, bringing the total funding to $2 billion and the total valuation to a whopping $32 billion. It's important to note that FTX gained enough power and money that it bought the rights to rename the Miami Heat Arena and changed it to the FTX Arena. According to reports, FTX paid $135 million in June 2021 for a 19-year contract. If you are thinking about why such big names supported fraud, well, it's not their fault because just like you and me, nobody knew that this could happen. Because a few months ago, nobody could even imagine that a billionaire person who looked like a genius nerd, wore t-shirts and shorts, and drove Toyota Corolla could be behind such a huge fraud. Wait a minute. Billionaire? Genius nerd? T-shirt and shorts? Does this remind you of someone else? In 2021, BGF emerged in the media as a shining example of how the extremely wealthy, who appear to have limitless wealth, might use it for good. Numerous profiles have been written about him, and he even appeared on the cover of Fortune. Investors and people saw him as a cool person who liked to play computer games during pitch sessions, and his eccentric behavior was taken as evidence of his genius. According to Sam Bankman Fried's nonprofit organization, the FTX Foundation has donated more than $190 million to date. SBF told Yahoo Finance that super yachts are so common among billionaires because they don't know what else to do with their money. He added that it is so difficult to effectively spend more than a million dollars per year on yourself. But SBF was not among those billionaires. Ironically, he had everything figured out. He had already developed a data and evidence-based plan for how to distribute his wealth. This is one of the reasons why his downfall is shocking. In June 2022, he joined the ranks of other wealthy mega-philanthropists like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Mackenzie Scott by signing the given pledge. He vowed to donate at least half of his fortune. That's nothing, as he already promised to donate 99% of his wealth. SBF said that he lives by the principle of earning to give. Well, he can't do it now because it was reported that SBF's net worth had almost completely disappeared as a result of his company filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It is unknown if he has any additional undeclared or unreported assets. SBF also created FTX Foundation's The Future Fund to support large-scale initiatives with the goal of enhancing humanity's long-term prospects. However, the members of the organization resigned on November 10th 
because of FTX's collapse. But how did people come to know that SBF is a fraud and how much damage has he done to people? Let's see how it went down and understand the complete timeline of FTX collapse. On November 2nd, the cryptocurrency news website, Coindesk, published an article about FTX and Alameda research based on leaked balance sheet of Alameda. The article claimed that Alameda Research's main asset was FTT, the native FTX token. The article revealed that Alameda Research held a position worth $5 billion in FTT. This made the cryptocurrency industry concerned about SBF's two companies' hidden debt and leverage. The CEO of the investment platform known as Swan Bitcoin, Corey Clipston, pointed out that it's interesting to note that Alameda's majority of net equity is actually FTX's own, centrally controlled, and created out of thin air token. All hell broke loose after the release of that article. On November 6th, the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world, Binance, announced that it would sell all of its holdings of FTT tokens. A jaw-dropping 23 million tokens worth $529 million. The CEO of Binance, Chang Peng Zhao, said that the decision to sell FTT tokens was based on risk management keeping in mind the collapse of Luna earlier in 2022. As a result, investors scrambled to withdraw their funds from FTX, believing that this would be the next cryptocurrency business to fail. Every person who invested in FTT must have been scared at that time. And as a result of this chaos, the price of FTT tokens fell. When the withdrawal requests reached an estimated $6 billion, FTX was unable to handle them. As a result, FTX experienced a liquidity crunch, which simply means they ran out of money to process the withdrawal requests. Six billion dollars worth of withdrawals in just 72 hours was sufficient for FTX to halt withdrawals. Like all of this is not shocking and disappointing enough, SBF tweeted in an attempt to reassure investors that everything was fine. And yes, this tweet has been deleted now. On November 8th, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, announced that it had reached a non-binding agreement to buy its close competitor for an undisclosed sum. However, the promise to rescue FTX did not live for very long because the very next day, Binance backed out of the deal. Binance declared that it cannot go through with the deal after the news about mishandling customer funds by FTX surfaced. The investors were in panic and confusion for the next few days, trying to figure out what exactly was going on. On November 10th, the assets of FTC's Bahamian subsidiary were frozen by the Bahamas Securities Regulator. Another announcement on the same day made SBF realize that the end was much closer than he might have anticipated. The California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation declared that an investigation into FTX had been started. If you think that's a lot of big news on the same day, then hear this. SGF took to Twitter to apologize for the liquidity crisis on the same day. He admitted that there weren't enough funds in FTX's non-US exchange to satisfy customer demand. He claimed that FTX miscalculated leverage and liquidity due to poor internal labeling, and added in the same Twitter thread that Alameda would stop trading. On November 11th, the Wall Street Journal revealed that behind the scenes, FTX used customers' money to fund the risky trading bets made by Alameda. And using customers' money like that is always a big no according to the law. The unavoidable happened, and FTX had to seek bankruptcy protection following the sudden collapse. It was reported that about 130 other affiliated companies also had to file for bankruptcy. This shocked the entire cryptocurrency industry. Just a few hours after bankruptcy, FTX claimed that it was a victim of unauthorized transactions and plans to move the digital assets to cold storage. Some analysts suspected that $477 million were stolen in the alleged hack. On November 16th, a lawsuit was filed against SBF in a Florida federal court, alleging that he created a fraudulent cryptocurrency scheme aimed at taking advantage of inexperienced investors from all over the United States. According to this lawsuit, FTX customers from the US suffered a loss of $11 billion. After all this, there was no way that SBF could go free. He was arrested by Bahamian authorities on December 12th. He was jailed for being connected with several fraud charges involving FTX. SBF was handed over to the jurisdiction of the US. Then, US District Court in Manhattan charged him on eight counts, 
which include money laundering and security fraud. SBF did not spend a lot of time in jail because, during a hearing on December 22nd, a federal judge granted him bail for a $250 million bond, which is the largest ever pre-trial bond. Every crypto investor is shaken by the incident and the people who were hit the hardest were the FTX customers. On December 13th, the new CEO of FTX informed a US House of Representatives committee that FTX customers have lost billions and all of it will not be recovered. People who invested their hard-earned money are now devastated because of this incident, making other people fearful of investing in crypto. On January 1st of 2023, many people were celebrating the new year, while some might have been worried about their losses in the previous year, and SBF might have been thinking about what he should do next. So, on January 3rd, SBF pleaded not guilty to all charges in a New York federal court, and he is set to face the trial on October 2nd. He also stated in an interview that he did not know that FTX deposits were used to pay Alameda creditors. So, what will become of FTX now? Well, one thing that is for sure is the future of FTX is in serious jeopardy. Many people are blaming FTX and SBF for what has happened. While there are few who are questioning why people put so much trust in a website that was not regulated by the US Securities and Exchange Commission. We would like to hear your opinion on the matter, so please comment. Make sure to hit the like button if you love the video and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss more amazing videos like this from us.